So, negative and positive are hooked up, and we got power. The lights are... Welcome back to another episode of Dad's Toy Garage, and today we are working on my 1973 Celica, and the things we'll be tackling are getting some mounting points for the rear seat back, um, some uh, metal shields, we're going to be fabricating those for in the front fender aprons, uh, to correct the wiring harness that was relocated to the fenders um, and a couple other small wiring details and we'll probably get some power uh, with the battery with the positive battery cable from the trunk so follow along and let's get some stuff rolling back on the uh, washer bottle solution for in the fender uh, you can see I've cut it up I've got a rubber hose in there and it works well the water doesn't leak at all through the system and that this end connects right about here to this tube which fits right into here um, what is leaking right now I guess I did a little test is the bottle seal itself on the bottom so they'll be, need a bit of sealing done there but happy to say that this all works really well so we'll I'll get it together and then I'll show you guys um, sort of what it's gonna look like I shaved off the tab in the back here, the bolt tab, I'll find it, I think it doesn't need any tabs, it's in there snug enough. Uh, I can still open this without everything shifting, so that works really well for me. On the washer bottle here, I have now transferred or extended the wiring harness. It used to come out by the wiper motor over there, because uh, that's where the bottle used to be. I've now extended it and it comes out here with this washer bottle. I picked up some new washer hose and I grabbed the old washer hose. I'm just going to take the fittings out of it, pretty much just this uh, Y fitting. Now I'll do these. Um, like there's this one here and this one here. They go to the spritzer nozzles. And this one will go to the tank. This is the one that has to be made a little bit longer. So there's only like two bucks for a little bit of hose. It's actually like a dollar thirty for seven feet. So it's more than I need, but that'll work. So I believe this rubber seal is leaking uh, for the pump where it contacts here. It's probably just dried it a little bit. So I'm going to put a little bit of um, windshield sealant around there and see if that holds uh, to keep the fluid in. And I don't really want to put sealant on this nipple here because uh, I feel like if I need to remove this, then it's stuck in there. So. We'll start with this, and if that doesn't work, then I gotta see if they make uh, replacement parts for that. Looking up into the top of the wheel well here, uh, on the driver's side front, there's my wiring. I mean, it'll be tucked in yet, but if you look at it, the stones are directly gonna hit it, and I think what I'm gonna do is kind of um, just build a metal plate that I'm going to weld in place there and that should keep um, keep the stones directly off of there. This is the part that I have made uh, to cover the wiring harness in the wheel well. Got a couple bead rolls in there and then uh, I've kind of rolled the edge. Here's my wire cover, I guess protection against the rocks and stuff. Let's get a little bit of a look at it here. Then we'll just pull this wiring harness up around here. It's going to sit on here like this. Now I finish this little bit of cover here. It just kind of continues down here and goes here. This is kind of the goal for uh, the wiring in this car and make it nice, neat, and tidy. This is the Camaro marker light, the actual wiring and light part of it and the light for this system requires a power and a ground so they split off that's why there's two wires in there and what I've done is put split tubing over it uh, there's probably other names for it uh, depending where you're from but this is split tubing where I live and uh, then I've electrical taped it over so that is the goal for all the wiring in this car neat and tidy so let's go throw that back in the car alright one more corner light is now working Put that wired up into the fender. I picked up these uh, wire loom uh, zip tie type clips. Got a little Christmas tree on the end. I uh, was going to use these that clip into the loom. 
Uh, but they weren't working once he had taped over the loom and I couldn't find anything big enough for my harness loom. So they'll get trimmed off yet. Um, but they're kind of zip tying the wire harness down so it keeps it nice and tight. Alright, the next part of this build is going to involve this fender splash guard apron type thing. It's rusty here, through, and the bottom is kind of disintegrated. The other one is similar, so that's going to have to be fabricated. So let's get into that. You can see the pizza box there. That's going to be the shape um, as much as I'm going to be rebuilding. So that will be the next step. There is the new bottom getting welded on. I just have it tacked in. So now I'm going to finish up those welds. This is a side by side comparison of driver versus passenger side on my car. Uh, the splash guards in the front. And uh, you can see I rebuilt this whole section and the top. Um, this side has this piece. But because I've stretched it out, I had to modify this a little bit. This one used to look this way. It was also rusty here, so that's why that was modified. Uh, this is all rusted out down there, so that is now fixed. This one needs to be done yet. Got the piece bolted into place, and it got a really nice fit. I think that'll work really good. And obviously the washer bottle is behind there. And I've added the drain tube. Let's see if we can get it here. The drain tube now comes right out the bottom, so that should help get all the water out. So I got the split tubing on this wire that goes to the coil, and uh, oh, it all goes in here. It goes to the ballast resistor, the coil, and one to the distributor. And uh, the next step is going to be building a wire cover on this side like I did on the other side. So got my pizza box here and we'll make use of that into something else. Here's the wire shield that I've made for the passenger side. And that'll go up in here. So for this wiring harness I'm doing a little differently. This is going to be a, a bolt-on piece. I've welded tabs uh, with weld nuts uh, on them. Here's the wire cover I made for the passenger side wheel well. Just step back a bit so you can see kind of where it sits in perspective. Um, like I said, it's all bolted on. So I've done a couple bolts in here. And this one's removable. Uh, learn as you go, I guess. And, uh, and then it's, it's clipped on with these zip tie clips for wire loom. You can see they come through with the Christmas tree ends here. And that just goes around and it kind of comes through behind the fog light here or the, yeah I think they're fog lights. But I'm going to stretch the drain tube that goes from here to about here to the bottom and that's what I'm doing with this tube here. And the other order of business at this point is fixing all of this rusted through stuff and on top a little bit uh, for the inner splash apron. So I'm going to get started on that shortly. So this is the bottom corner that I've made. Uh, I cut out some of the rust. You can see in the sharpie where I'm going to do the rest of the cuts. Uh, we're looking again in here. Um, so let's we'll get it fitted up in there. It's kind of how it's going to fit in there. It'll obviously be tighter when I have it in there but uh, that should be a really nice looking part when it's done. Alright, passenger side um, splash guard is done, the front one, and uh, got this stuff all fixed up here, so that is ready to be bolted into the car. Alright, this inner splash shield's metal working is done and installed, and that will probably just get some bed liner or something over it after I'm done priming and painting it. And this one's done in here, you can see the wire guard and finished up the last corner marker light type thing from the Camaro that's wired in and it also works. So this inner wheel well is done in the front corner now so I think we're getting pretty close. There's a little bit of tack welding left for some spot welds and engine bay 
we'll tackle that and then we should be on to getting ready for sandblast. This is my new battery cable for the positive. We'll run from the trunk now and we'll go to the starter and I'll get that in there in the car and I'll show you guys what it looks like. But the starter end got one of these soldered onto here and this is the positive end that goes to the battery and then I've just done uh, split tubing and, uh, and then I put some electrical tape over top of that twice. So right down in this corner here, I have hole sawed a hole. And so off of the battery terminal to there is where the cable's gonna enter the firewall. So the positive cable will tie in to the battery here and it'll go through the firewall through a grommet that I've added and a hole. And uh, it comes through here and it follows this line goes through the wiring harness holes and I kind of get it up up closer to the tunnel so you don't step on it as much when you get in and it goes up here I've done a zip tie mount there in the framework and then we're going to go back to the trunk here there it is coming through not touching any sharp edges so we'll hook up the negative and make sure that all works good so negative and positive are hooked up and we got power. The lights are kind of dim right now because it's my old Miata battery and it froze over winter. But there's enough charge to run us some headlights. So we'll just go to the back of the car here. So I've just I've welded on a stud with a bolt so that ties down. And there's my negative power. So we'll just take that off. Just doing a test fit of my rear bench seat in the back of this car. I wanted to make sure everything still lined up after doing a lot of welding, cutting, and fabricating. And it seems to. Um, the one thing I noticed is uh, you can't see it now, but down in these corners, there was a bolt. And I always wondered what for. I kind of thought it might be to hold the back of the seat down. But I had to patch it because there was it was rusted out there. So I'm going to have to drill a hole and put a weld nut in there. Uh, both cars had, had the bolts heads broken off, so I didn't know what purpose served exactly, but now I have a pretty good idea that that's going to hold the seat in place. So I'm going to work on that now. So, got the nuts welded in uh, for the seat mounts, and we'll get the seat back installed. So the seat is now bolted in place, in the, or at least the backrest is, and it all fits very nice. So I'm going to have to give it a test seat. Alright guys, I'm sitting here in the back seat and it is actually very comfy. Uh, feels good to sit for a little bit. Uh, I've got a bunch of progress done in this video. Uh, wiring stuff done, some wire guards, and this back seat now fits. I know what the bolt holes are for. So until next time, we'll talk to you later.